Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. In this week's video, I want to address the question, why do we struggle with our own creativity? Last week, I made a video about can you judge your own photography? And if you haven't watched that, please click on the link up there because it does lay out a good foundation for what's going to come today. Uh, I decided to split creativity from the more technical side of photography because I think some of those you can definitely objectively decide whether you've been successful in actually doing something from a technical point of view. Whereas creativity, I think, has always been considered a more subjective quality and can you really judge subjectivity at all? I think the first problem we come up with is that we try and find a single answer for something that doesn't have a single answer. We're trying to pin down our creativity as some kind of constant when I don't believe it is. The second thing that we have a problem with is that we're always comparing our creativity to others. Uh, some of my best friends are the world's greatest landscape photographers and I'm always looking at their work and thinking, how do they see those things? How do they do those things? How do they have the physicality to go to those places? Uh, their imagination and their creativity just seems on a different planet from my own. However, I do get feedback from other people saying lovely things about my creativity too. So I think that is where the subjective side of things is, that comparative language. Uh, and I think it's the relationship that we have with those things that massively affect the relationship that we have with our own creativity. So let's look at each of these things in turn. We're basically looking at a situation where if we are not constant, how can our creativity be constant? I think all of us understand that we are on somewhat of an up and down path. We are rarely flatlining, and if you are, then it's not a good sign. Uh, typically, if you're lying in a hospital bed, flatlining, uh, it's not a good day. Uh, so I think the way to look at it is, is that these ups and downs that we have in life are part of the cycle of our lives. We all understand what it feels like to feel happy, to feel sad, to have good days, bad days, to feel joyful, to feel melancholic, to be depressed or to be ecstatic, to be in love and out of love. All of these things have massive impacts on how we feel on a daily basis. How can our creativity be constant? There's the big question. How can you evaluate your creativity as a constant when you are so variable? And I think this is one of the first things we have to absolutely come to terms with, with our relationship, with our creativity, is that you may have made a photograph when you were in a downside or in a bad place, and you're evaluating from when you were in a good place, and you're not even speaking the same language. You're not the same person. And I think this is a massive learning point that you should be taking on board to have a more forgiving and accepting relationship with your own creativity because you are not constant. Comparing our work with others is always a dangerous thing to do. And I think it's where that relationship between inspiration, motivation and desperation kind of come together. Um, if you're constantly looking at other people's photographs and always feeling that your images come up short of that, then I think ultimately that's going to be a dangerous thing to do. I've said so many times in my own uh, guitar playing that if I'm always comparing myself to the world's best guitarists, I'm always going to feel like a crappy guitarist. Whereas that's not the case, yeah? And it's the same with photography. If you always compare yourself to the very best photography in the world, you will always feel as if your photography sucks. And I think that's not necessarily the case either. Each of us has a unique opportunity to express ourselves in a unique way, to express, articulate, feel, experience, talk about our perspectives, show the way that we see the world, and through a combination of the craft and the skill that we develop over the years, in conjunction with that imagination and playful exploration, that is where the magic happens. I'd like to look at this photograph that I made back in 2015. At the time, it was very much what I consider to be the pinnacle of my creativity. It was uh, majestic, the light was amazing, the processing was done to a reasonably high standard. I had created something that was truly a majestic and 
grand landscape, very much in the style of the day. <laughs> you know, this was at the time when um, creating these types of photographs was really starting to become a big thing, sort of in the middle of 2015. I was on an expedition with Mark Adamus, and of course Mark Adamus is a master craftsman of this type of photography, and I think at that time it was easy for me to compare myself to Mark or want to be as good as Mark in terms of this type of photography. It was important to me, partly because I was hugely depressed at the time uh, and was going through periods of deep melancholy with huge amounts of anxiety. And the external validation I got from posting this image on 500px briefly made me feel better about myself. Unfortunately, uh, I also considered it not to be honest and to create a problem in photography by making everything appear better than it really was. If, however, we look at the raw file, you can see that it's very, very different from the final photograph. Have I been creative? to make this raw file into the image that we were just looking at? Um, the question, the answer to that is probably yes. It, it requires a lot of skill and creativity to make photographs like that, um, albeit a misrepresentation of what I experienced. This is a handheld 14 mil panoramic. Uh, I was shooting about half a second to get the slow water. So this, you know, this is a lazy photograph in many ways. I didn't even use a uh, a tripod. Um, we were up at nearly 5,000 meters, tired, exhausted after days and days of trekking through the mountains uh, with very little sleep and very small amounts of food. So at the end of the day, the experience was a lazy one, albeit in a majestic landscape. So when I was well fed with a glass of wine sat in my office back home, uh, it was easier to throw my creativity and energy into producing something that was grand and majestic. I don't want to evaluate this particular instance as a snapshot of who I was as a creative person at that time, but it was certainly driven by low self, uh, self-esteem, low feelings of self-value or self-worth, and I wanted to project something that was a little bit more uh, bouncy and optimistic perhaps than I was feeling at the time. If we jump forward to this photograph that was taken in October 2019, um, that was four years after the previous photograph and I was in a very different place. Um, my wife and Christine and I were on a little private uh, trip on our own out to the Western Isles of Scotland, having a wonderful time, immersing ourselves in the landscape, being playful, exploring, uh, looking under every rock, looking around every corner, uh, exploring the relationship between the water and the land and the light and the rocks. So everything was very much coming from a very different place. And photographs like this, to me, are more representative of my contemporary creativity, where they're a function of a moment of insight into the relationship of the elements that were present at the time. The, the dragon's eye, as I like to call it, is just a pink cloud reflected in that little pond there. It's a tiny little puddle, maybe no bigger than that. Um, and at the end of the day, the dark processing makes it quite mysterious and melancho somewhat melancholic, but equally kind of joyful and uh, quite energizing. So I still love this photograph, whereas the first photograph we saw, I don't really like it anymore because it doesn't express who I am in any shape or form. Uh, I consider it a lie. In the past, I've called it my zenith of shame, in fact, because it's a complete misrepresentation. It was constructed in the computer. It had nothing to do with what I experienced, whereas this photograph I find is a much truer representation of myself I can still look at it and feel joyful and excited about that moment of visualization in the field, seeing something that I thought that's really cool and then composing it as a square to kind of contain the amount of information that I was going to put out there. So in summary, I think it's really important for us to understand that our creativity cannot be constant because we are not constant. The relationship that we have with our creativity is always a snapshot in time. It's never constant either. I can feel very good about my photography 
and a few weeks later look at the same thing and just not resonate with it at all, the thing hasn't changed. I have changed. Something I made in a moment five years ago, maybe I just don't understand that perspective anymore. We're not speaking the same language. In future videos, I want to address things like how do we create from dark spaces? How do we create when we are low in energy or we're feeling melancholic? There's a whole spectrum of creativity that we have at our disposal, should we allow ourselves to do so and not just get pigeonholed into one type of photograph in one style, in one form of articulation or expression. On a daily basis, I'm blown away uh, on the expressive photography members community, not just by the images and the uniqueness of perspective that's being put out there, but also the huge detail and depth of back and forth commenting between all the members, not just myself, uh, where they're discussing the uniqueness of perspective and creativity and the skill sets and the mindsets that go towards allowing you to have a better relationship with your creativity. Before we close here, I'd like to mention that uh, last month I did offer a special on three of our most popular ebooks, Luminosity and Contrast, The Colour of Meaning and Creativity Superpowers. You can get all three of those books still for £19.99. I'm going to keep them as a bundle because it's just so much more accessible for you. Uh, the feedback I get from clients is still that they are some of the best books people have read on the creative process and understanding how to see the world in a unique and expressively articulate way. So please, if you haven't already done so, dive into the link at the bottom in the description and get yourself a copy of those three ebooks. I assure you, you will not be disappointed. So just to summarize where we got to there, you are not a constant. There are so many things that affect who you are on a daily basis, from the amount of sleep you've got, to your relationships with other people, to the work stress, to uh, how, you know, how motivated, how imaginative you're feeling. There are so many variables. You cannot bring your A game every single time you go out to the field. Your A game is going to have all sorts of different faces and facets that are not constant either. So the best way to do is to surrender to how you feel and you will find something in the landscape. I guarantee if you look, you will find something in the landscape that somehow becomes a reflection of who you are in that moment and down that rabbit hole, you will find your creativity. So the reason we struggle with our own creativity all the time is because we're putting too much pressure on ourselves. We're asking the wrong questions. We're assuming it's constant and we're constantly comparing ourselves with others. Thanks very much for watching. We do appreciate it. Dive into the comments if you have anything you want to add or there are things that you would like me to discuss in future videos. Check out the Expressive Photography Forum and of course our special offer on those three ebooks. Thanks for watching as always. Click the subscribe button, do all that jazz and I look forward to sharing some more of my thoughts with you next week. But for now, have a great weekend wherever you are. I hope you are healthy and happy. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.